Hello guys, it's been a while since my last video, but I've had a couple of people ask me for a schematic on that EEPROM reader. Uh, it's not really a, so much a reader as it is just manually flipping through pages in memory. Uh, as such, I, I didn't really have a schematic when I built it, I just threw some stuff together. But uh, if you don't work with EEPROMs or static RAM or anything like that, I can understand how you might be uh, a little bit anxious about trying to do this. Um, just in case you would hurt anything. Um, the good news is it's really simple. Uh, there's not much to it. Uh, these old devices, as some new devices also are, happen to be just really simple parallel devices. You punch an address in, and uh, if you're in a state that uh, would designate a read command, the data on the output bus just changes automatically. You don't have to worry about try gating or anything because you're not doing any writes. Uh, in fact, on this old EEPROM, uh, it's even simpler. Uh, you can't do a write without special high voltage. So no matter what you set the control inputs to, uh, you're not going to trigger a write. So you don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, there are just a few simple parts to this. Um, I'll go ahead and highlight them as I go here or box them in or something. On the very left, you'll see address. Uh, this is the indicator for bits 0 through 11 on the address bus. Uh, these are just the LEDs. Uh, all these resistors here are 2.2K ohm. I chose 2.2K because on a 5 volt system, like this old TTL chip happens to be, or actually I think it says HMOS, but uh, it's 5 volt signaling. On 5 volts, that corresponds to about 2 milliamps of current, which uh, works out pretty well. It's easily enough for an indicator in any average LED. You don't need to go high power here. Uh, up at the top on the kind of left, you'll see the address switches, which represents um, each bit on the address bus. In the video that I had earlier, it was done with two 8-bit switch blocks, but you can use any kind of switch you want to. I just recommend they use a uh, switch that is not momentary. Uh, you'll notice that each one just goes from 5 volts straight to one of the address inputs on the chip itself, which also will light up an LED whenever it's active. Now, as far as the data is concerned, uh, that's in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, I just have each bit tied to basically the same kind of cluster. It's an LED and a 2.2K ohm resistor. 2.2K ohms here uh, also works out pretty well because uh, on a 5 volt system, a couple of milliamps, it's probably going to be okay. Uh, you don't have to actually feed it through a transistor to drive the LED or anything. These old devices are strong enough to drive them directly, but at the same time you don't want to drive it too strong because if you try and dictate more current than this chip can source, you might run into problems. Uh, specifically, you could burn up the output drivers. So, you know, 2.2K ohm should be just fine. As far as the uh, ground and power pins, those are easy enough. You can see them in the lower left and upper right hand corners respectively. And uh, that only leaves two things. There is output enable and chip enable, or chip select. Uh, I think is what it would normally be on a more modern chip. Uh, these, as with their modern equivalents, are active low signals, which is why you see the slash on the diagram. You would control them with the switches that I show in the upper right hand corner. They'll be indicated with the two LEDs that you see in the middle right side. And as far as uh, operating this chip goes, it's pretty simple. If you leave both uh, chip enable and output enable, uh, high, then the chip will be in standby mode. If you drop output enable to be low, your output will be active if your chip is selected. So you would go ahead and enable your chip by dropping chip enable low as well to where both chip enable and output enable are low. Whenever that is true, whatever address you have on the address lines will dictate a read which will be shown on the data lines uh, which we're using as output only, but our output input uh, if you're using like an actual full-fledged reader. So in order to use this chip, like I said, just drop both chip enable and output enable low, punch in an address, you don't even have to change chip enable and output enable for this, 
and you'll see the data show up on the data bus as you flip the switches. Um, you don't have to pull these signals low or anything. You'll notice I don't have any resistors uh, to do that pull down. The reason for that is that the LEDs are sufficient. They'll allow enough current flow to drop the level below what constitutes a valid one. Uh, whenever you're dealing with uh, the kind of frequencies we're dealing with here, you know, using fingers and eyes, it just doesn't matter. If you're using something higher speed, you, you might want to do an actual proper pull down that doesn't go through a diode, but that's just a, a recommendation. So there you have it. Real simple. Um, really easy to get a handle on to conceptually, if, even if you haven't done this before. Let me know if you have any further questions, I'll be happy to answer them.